Hey there, odds are if you clicked on this video you want to see the final boss of this game and the theories that I have for it. But at the same time I want to give another final warning just in case you accidentally clicked, we are about to jump into the final boss of Pikmin 4 and discuss the theories surrounding the creature that you have to take out. So once again, final warning before jumping into the video, but I hope you guys enjoy. Cavern for a King is the final cave of the main story, which takes you through a gauntlet of many different floors until finally reaching the end, chasing after Louis, Alamar's partner and a troublemaker from the planet Hakate, where he takes control of a giant raging beast down in the depths of this cavern, where you're left to track down this beast in order to extract DNA to heal your own space pub OG. Louis sprints towards a mysterious furry beast in the background before disappearing completely to appear on top of his head, and he is in charge of this battle as you battle the ancient sire hound. This monstrosity of a pup is capable of everything that Ochi and Moss can do, but even more. He can rush towards you, he can also jump up into the air to try to slam down on top of you, and he has elemental attacks as well. He can shoot out fuzzy snowballs that cover the stage, along with his super frigid arctic breath. He can cover the stage with electric fur balls, emitting lightning throughout the entire stage. And yes, even fire emitting fur balls are possible with this pup, and he can even shoot fireballs out of his mouth and fire rings scorching the ground beneath your feet. It's safe to say that he's in control of pretty much every element. The only element we don't see him use is water, but the fact that he can use ice probably states that he could use water if he wanted to. However, there's one more phase that the Sire Hound uses. It's able to fly up in the air and glow a mysterious green neon color. And it shoots out a red poisonous substance that will kill any and every single Pikmin in your party. Yes, this includes the white poisonous Pikmin and even your green glow Pikmin. None can touch this poisonous substance. On closer look, you can see red strands of energy flow and tunnel throughout this substance on the ground, almost like veins that are alive inside of the goo. It pulsates with irradiating dark and light red colors and also emits some type of red flakes that fly up into the air before it dissipates, showing just how truly toxic this material is. In fact, there's no creature in the entire game or Pikmin franchise that has a substance pouring from its body like this outside of the Smoky Prog. Yeah, the Smoky Prog is the only other creature which also has a green body, not as bright as that of the Sire Hound, but a green body followed by a red poisonous trail that will once again kill off any type of Pikmin, Glow Pikmin, and White Poison Pikmin alike. But more on the Smoky Prog later. Whatever this mysterious green glow is and this weird goo coming out of the body of the Sire Hound proves to be something very, very special as it allows him to fly in the air. Now there is a chance that this ability is possible with any other phase of the fight, he just doesn't use it, maybe it's just his giant ears that allows him to fly in the air, or it could be the toxic chemical that is all over it. Whatever that neon green glow is, is allowing him to fly in the air. After you defeat the pup, he goes out of his hostile mode and runs away, turning back to his normal shades of gray, black, and light blue. Before running off, his collar pops off, allowing you to take Louie and the collar back to the base in order to make the compound in order to heal your own pup, Ochi. And then the ancient sire hound runs away off in the background. Brave explorers were able to heal Ochi and leave Moss back home with his fellow Pikmin in order to guard them, but he's not the only one guarding these Pikmin. Yep, the ancient sire hound follows in tow to seem to be their brand new protector as well, as he seems like he just wants a friend. So yes, overall it's a fairly quick ending with this creature, but it goes a lot deeper because I feel like the ancient sire hound can help tie us into the creatures who once lived on this earth, meaning the past humans, and maybe tell us a better story as what's going on here and what has happened to this beloved planet. Pikmin 4's Sire Hound is a big mystery, as it introduces a new type of creature we haven't seen in any of the other games in the series. That is Space Pups. We have two in the game outside of the Sire Hound, and that's between Ochi and Moss. 
Ochi is a space pup that comes from the Shepard lineage, and actually comes from the planet Gaia, where Shepard explains how it's a family dog, and at the same time, isn't the only dog in space. According to Shepard, there are tons of other space dogs all over the galaxy through the various different planets, and the crew even makes comments on this throughout the game. Now the space dog Moss is from PNF 404 and found by Alamar. Yes, this mysterious planet is where this pup is from and it also was able to grow its leaf tail from being born here and spending most of its life on this planet. And then leaves us with the third and only other space pup that we've seen within this game and that is the ancient Sirehound. Now just the name itself is very special ancient sirehound. This pup has been around for a very long time. Now even though there's tons of space pups, apparently there's no family for them right now. And it's only active during night, it has an unknown weight, and the scientific name for the pup is Diaconus Perditum, which hopefully I'm pronouncing that right. Now we know the name ancient sirehound means it is an ancient pup, but the word or term sire is used to describe an act of a male animal creating offspring, which would make a lot of sense considering the fact that this apparently is the father pup, the one that gave offspring to all of the space pups. He is the one that started this lineage apparently where all the other space dogs come from a line of other dogs by the sirehound. So this sirehound is very important and now we know why it's so ancient. The ancient sirehound is technically the first space dog, even though technically it has never been to space since it spent its entire life here on PNF 404. We can also tell just how ancient this creature is thanks to some in-game text. And this first one actually comes from Dalmo that states, a coat that's dense and rough like a primeval forest, a stench like a wet canine, and a shockingly toasty body temperature, clearly a dog in every sense. The long history of dogs being companions we can rely on triggers an extinctive reaction through our entire bodies. If I were left on this planet with this massive cutie, I'd be content. So with a giant coat of overgrown fur and a nasty stench according to Dalmo, this pup has definitely been around for a very long time. But let's move on to Alamar's notes. Alamar states, if we harvest mesenchymal stem cells from the gigantic canine creature and cultivate them with glow sap, the generated serum should return Ochi's leafified tail to normal once administered. These results would indicate that 99.9% .9 of the canine creature's DNA matches Ochi's and that the only difference between Ochi and Moss may be the natural presence or absence of a leaf tail. Now Moss is from this planet PNF 404 and that's why she has a leaf tail is because she originates from this planet and that's just how she was born and she can't leave this planet because she's embedded to it because of that tail. Now Ochi is from the planet Gaia not from this planet but developed the tail later on which in turn allows Ochi to be healed because he is not from this planet and the ancient Sirehound stem cells allow this healing process to work of course along with the glow sap. Now in order to find out just exactly what the ancient sirehound is, it does open up one question right away. Why does Moss have a leaf tail when she was born on this planet, but the ancient sirehound not have a leaf tail? This is not easily able to be explained because there's no type of information as to why the ancient sirehound doesn't have a leaf tail and what's actually causing this leaf tail to spawn in the first place. For instance, why did Ochi actually spawn this tail? And it can't just be something with the planet, there has to be something causing this. And the only thing that I could possibly think of is maybe some type of radiation or something in the air from this planet that's actually causing Ochi to grow this tail as it seems to be the only planet that does this to space dogs. This theory could go even deeper if we bring the explorers into it, because maybe if there is radiation in the air, it's not the oxygen that they can't breathe in, in fact it's just the radiation of this planet and they just don't know it. But unfortunately it brings us back in a circle again because the ancient sirehound is fine. If there is radiation in the air, how come the ancient sirehound isn't growing a leaf tail? Well, who's to say that this sirehound isn't infected?
One theory and assumption that we can make is there could have been some type of nuclear fallout that affected this planet. Now, maybe the nuclear missiles or bomb shells or whatever went off didn't affect this immediate area that Pikmin 4 takes place in, that's why everything's intact still, but there's still radiation all over the planet due to these missiles exploding. But what if the leaf tail is more of a defect from this planet through the lineage? What if the radiation actually infected the Sire Hound, giving it special abilities, which includes that glowing green which allows it to fly in the air and also spit out that corrupted poison out of its mouth. Also, considering the fact that it can also use elemental attacks, which pretty much no other space dog that we've seen so far, at least with Ochi and Moss, has been able to do yet, using fire, electricity, and ice. So what if all the humans died thanks to this nuclear fallout, or took refuge underground and this pup was left behind, and soaked up all the radiation, but instead of perishing, actually was mutated into a big beast, still a dog, but with brand new abilities. Once again, the smoky prog emits the very same toxic chemical and sports a familiar green hue. What if this creature too also got stuck in some type of nuclear fallout, or maybe just consumed some radiation somewhere? Well, let's dig into the Smoky Prog's background a little more. Alamar's note states, by examining the genes adhered to the Smoky Prog's eggs, it has been confirmed that they are, in fact, Mammuta eggs. This discovery allows for the possibility that Mammutas that do not develop properly in hatch become smoky progs. If hypothetically a mamuta were to remain above ground at night and absorb glow sap, that might impact the nutrient levels within its eggs yolk. That change could lead to the embryo's inavailability or break down its enzymes, then maybe, and then is left unfinished. So I'm not 100% sure where Alamar is going with this in his notes, and maybe some of you could actually help me out down below, but apparently this is pretty much when the eggs hatch unfinished. But I think it's more than just early hatching of Mammuta eggs, which makes the smoky prog look like this and also emit this weird red poison that kills every single pigment. To me, it looks like radiation, like maybe radiation seeped into some of the eggs, and even the eggs have weird spots on them which definitely don't look like it's just supposed to be there and it's a premature egg. These could all be cases of radiation, and once again, the ancient sirehound just accepting this and it's just mutating his body. So his DNA and genes are now mutated, so when he has offspring, that mutation gene is still in there. For some reason, instead of the rest of the dogs having the gene to have the different status effects like the sire hound, instead their effect is a leaf tail. Before wrapping this up, on the topic of offspring, how in the world did this pup get offspring and how are there so many space dogs across the galaxy because of him? I mean, how is this even possible? But we know Moss actually snuck on board onto Alamar's ship, which he had to actually return her back down to the ground because she was freaking out thanks to her leaf tail tying her to the planet. So odds are this could have happened with a lot of other explorers, where they came down and explored PNF 404 from their own planet and found their own space dogs down here and brought them back to their planet with them, at least those that did not have leaf tails yet. So maybe all the offsprings or some of the offsprings that came from the Sire Hound on PNF 404 were pretty much taken from this planet and back to their own home planets to breed them there, and eventually all over the different planets and galaxies and space. I'm just still not 100% sure how all of those dogs didn't have leaf tails if they originated from PNF 404 like Moss. It's still a bit of a mystery. But the ancient Sire Hound himself is a big mystery. It tells of probably the last that we have of the human race, the last thing that calls back to the population of Earth before it was inevitably all wiped out and could be a telling of something that actually happened to them as we still don't know what took out everybody from this planet. Of course, that is gonna be a video in and of itself, but maybe the ancient sire hound can give us a hint based on radiation or some type of nuclear fallout or war that happened over the course of a past time. It's hard to to say, but as many answers that we've gotten from this game, there's still just as many questions. So if you have your own theories or thoughts, comment them down below. I would love to hear them and check them out. Thank you so much for tuning in, and make sure you stop and leave a like and subscribe if you learned something new today and if you enjoyed Pikmin 4 as much as I did. You guys have been showing so much support recently, so thank you so much, and like always, I'll see you all on the next one. See you guys.